So when I was first learning trigonometry, I remember asking my teacher, what is sine? Like, what actually is it? And she would either answer me with, it's the ratio of a right angle triangle's uh, opposite side to its hypotenuse. Or occasionally we would just get, it's a function. And at that time, we didn't even really know what a function was. We had to find that in math. But even like the math teacher did not have a good answer for what sine is. Or a nice way to think about it that's beyond just all oh, the ratio of the triangles thing blah, blah. so i was googling around i looked up what is sine and the first thing that came up was this dictionary definition from trusty merriam webster uh, and it says definition of sine is the trigonomic function for an acute angle that is the ratio between the leg opposite the angle when it is considered part of a right triangle and the hypotenuse okay that's the so in so Katoa. The second definition here, it's it's a trigonometric function sine theta that for all real numbers theta is exactly equal to the sine of an angle theta. That's so helpful. And then they also give an alternating series, uh, which is looks like the Taylor expansion for sine, which who the fuck knows what that is? The recent examples on the web what is sine? Like, what actually is it? The answer is nothing. Just remember that you can use Sokotoa and you'll be fine. No one really knows what sine is. Like, most people have not, do not have a good definition for what sine is. I have a question to ask you. What's sine? What is sine? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a spicy question. Who's my audience? <laughs> Who's your audience? Okay, let's do someone who is not a math undergrad. Someone, who's not someone a math who undergrad. maybe has has heard of sine before, and maybe even used it before. Okay. Sine is the prototypical um, periodic wave. It's just a function that we use, and it's very handy for modeling these periodic wave things. Here's how I like to think about sine. And I want to try to explain it with as few scary math words as possible. Start with a point moving in a circle. It just keeps going around and around. It's periodic. For simplicity, we'll say that the circle has a radius of one. Now let's look at its shadow. The sine is the length of this shadow, or its height above or below the ground. How do we associate a value of sine to a particular angle, though? If you were to pause at any moment and consider the angle which that point has carved out, the sine of that angle is the current height of the shadow, also referred to as the y-coordinate of the point. Sine is just the one-dimensional projection of a point moving in a circle. Cosine is the exact same thing, just projected onto the other axis. It's still the shadow, just from a different light source. But wait, how does the classic sine curve play into this depiction? If you're to graph the shadow over time, you'll get our favorite sine wave. And same thing with cosine. Okay, you might be wondering, what about Sokotoa? Where are the triangles? Take your favorite angle, drop a perpendicular from the point to the x-axis, and there you have a right angle triangle. Any right angle triangle that you could ever need is just a scaled version of a triangle inscribed in this circle. So really, a right angle triangle is just a special case of a circle. I like thinking about sine this way because it encapsulates a lot of the definitions that we use for sine. Its periodic nature is clear since the circle just keeps moving around and repeating itself. Like Matthew said, sine is the most basic function that we use to model periodic things. What's crazy, though, is the power of this function. If you add up enough different sine functions, you can get as close as you want to any function ever. Check more on Fourier series if you're into that. Like, I hate Sokotoa. Like, yeah, I get it's useful. But don't just tell me what sine is in terms of Sokotoa. Like, come on. It represents memorization and, uh, yeah, memorization of procedures to do math, which I don't like. That's not why math is fun. 
Um, that is why I don't like maths in, in sometimes. Let me know if you guys have any other math concepts that the general public has sort of encountered but would have no idea or like even like math teachers like they know how to use these things um but don't really know what they are in, in a deeper way like or have have more than two definitions to give to you when you ask them what they are um if you have a little bit more math background the definition has to become more technical simply because um, you even in high school you don't put sign on a rigorous foundation you study triangles long enough and you know like similar triangles and whatever then it becomes clear that there's like a ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse if you fix the angle right but it's not really a rigorous definition um the the more rigorous definitions uh that i know of actually come from complex right so you need to you need to define it like for example as a taylor series um and that that one works well um but you need a, the the upshot is you need a lot more analysis to justify why that definition makes sense and why it's more rigorous but yeah it, depending on who you're talking to the definition of sign should not you know it should not look the same right uh, yeah it gets it gets quite uh, tricky and to finish off of course some Desmos animations that I made using sine and cosine, and even tangent. Hope you enjoy. The reason these animations look cool, in my opinion, is because of um, the periodicity of the trigonometric function sine and cosine. We get these repetitive patterns all from those functions.